113 Questions About Evolution with John Perry. Hanging out with Cousin Paige, Malibu Edition. Uh, why did whales come back to the ocean? Oh, some people I've, I found don't know this, but whales evolved from land animals. So we have, if you go way back in the fossil record, you start to see fish coming out onto land. So you mm -hmm. start to see the evolution of amphibians. All vertebrates, all land vertebrates, you know, tetrapods, things with four appendages and a backbone, they all evolved from these uh, ancient fish. One group became amphibious, another group split off from them, became w what we call amniotes. The early amniotes gave rise to reptiles and mammals. Then one tiny branch of the mammal evolutionary tree decided to go back into the ocean. And that branch was whales. Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> Hold on now. There's actually several, or in fact many, land animal groups that independently return to the water. Whales are only one of those groups, but they're one of the main ones that we think of today. But there's also, you know, there's plesiosaurs and mosasaurs and sea turtles and aquatic snakes and pinnipeds. Pinnipeds are, you know, seals and sea lions and walruses. Then there's manatees. All of these groups independently return back to the ocean as well. And then, to a lesser extent, I suppose you've also got things like otters and crocodiles and beavers and marine iguanas and hippos and, you know, there's, there's a number of them. All of these different groups of animals, they, they've either completely given up on or partially given up on all of the really complicated land traits that they spent millions of years evolving, you know, millions of years working on. And that's weird, right? It's like all that work, all of that progression, what we would think of as progression. Uh, to become a land animal, and then they just throw it all away and go back into the ocean. One of the reasons that's so weird for us to think about is that we like to think of things as progressing. We like to think, think of things that are more like us as being more evolved. That's actually the wrong way to think, because whatever advantages happen to be there in an environment at a particular time, evolution just, yeah, it doesn't have any sort of goal, any sort of direction. Whales, we're not exactly sure what enticed them back into the ocean. But the evolution of whales seems to have happened a few million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. And during the time of the dinosaurs, there, was, there were also lots of other weird predators. There were like uh, reptilian, large reptilian uh, predators in the ocean. They all died out with the dinosaurs as well. It's possible it was just the, just the fact that there was this open niche, or niche, depending on how you want to say that. There was space there, and so whales filled it. The earliest whales that we have in the fossil record, we can tell from isotopes, which is isotopes in their teeth. We can tell that they were most likely freshwater. So the early whales probably lived somewhat like otters do today. Uh, they were freshwater, they were eating plants, they were eating fish, uh, and eventually they were enticed to a full aquatic lifestyle. So just slowly but surely they gave up their, you know, land traits. <laughs> And we just still see that they have lungs, and they have the remnants of hind legs. Uh, and then in the fossil record, we of course trace trace them back to these land animals. So evolution is a meandering process, <laughs> kind of like my response was. <laughs> cool. Next question. 